let's look at complementary angles and co-functions. So complementary angles sum to 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians, same thing. So let's consider a right triangle with a hypotenuse labeled C and the other two legs A and B, whose opposite angles are labeled A, B, and C. So those just correspond. So let's draw that triangle. I'm going to put our right angle in the bottom uh, right corner here and label it C. Uh, that means that lowercase c will be um, the name of its opposite side. I'm going to put um, big A angle in the lower left corner. Its opposite side I'm going to call A. And then the angle capital B will be in the top right corner. Its opposite side will be little b. And now I'm going to use uh, some right triangle trigonometry. Before I do that, I notice that the interior angles I know of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. When I am in a right triangle, one of those angles is 90 degrees, in this case C. So that leaves us with A and B have to sum to 90 degrees. Well, this tells us that A and B are complementary angles. And this will be important in a minute. Okay, so let's use the triangle to evaluate each expression in terms of A, B, and C. So we don't have numbers here, uh, but we can still um, see what they would be in terms of the side lengths. Uh, for this, we're going to need SOHCAHTOA. So I'm going to write it up here because we are doing right triangle trigonometry. So SOHCAHTOA. So if I have, all right, um, let's do all these ones with angle B first in these in the first column and third column. So if I am doing that, then I want to be at angle B. If I'm a little person up here, then it's um, side B would be its opposite, and side A would be its adjacent side, and hypotenuse is the same no matter what. So when I do sine of B, I need opposite over hypotenuse, so B over C. Cosecant of B, I know that's the reciprocal of sine, so C over B. Tangent of B will be opposite over adjacent, which is B over A. Okay, now I'm going over to my third column, starting with cosine of B. Cosine of B is adjacent over hypotenuse, so A over C. The secant of B is just the reciprocal of cosine, so C over A. And cotan of B, I know, is just the reciprocal of tan, so A over B. All right. Uh, now let's kind of erase this, because now I want to do my second and fourth columns. All of these are trigonometric functions of angle A. So now I need to be a little person or a little bug standing at angle A. Uh, so if I'm here, now the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse, right? I can leave that. But um, the side A would be the opposite side and side B would be the adjacent side. So let's complete these values. So cosine of big angle A here is adjacent over hypotenuse. So B over C. Secant of A is just the reciprocal of cosine, so C over B. Cotan of A, I know, is adjacent over opposite, so B over A. Going over here to the fourth column, starting with sine of A, I have opposite over hypotenuse. Cosecant of A is just the reciprocal, so C over A. And tangent of A is just opposite over adjacent, so A over B. So uh, we're going to look at some of the patterns that we might see up here, but first we're going to look at this definition. And so this definition says cofunctions f and g, or sorry, functions f and g are cofunctions if f of a equals g of b. Okay, so that is saying that um, if a is an input for one and b is an input for the other, then the outputs of these different functions are, are the same or they match. And this is true when a and b are complementary angles. Okay, we know that complementary angles mean they add to 90 degrees. So cofunctions of complementary angles are equal. Okay, well, let's see if we have anything up, up here. So I know that A and B are complementary angles. We said that up here before. So let's take a look. So I have, um, here's sine of B and cosine of A. So the inputs are complementary angles for these two different functions, but the outputs are the same. Let's look over here in the same row, but in columns three and four. So I have cosine of B is A over C and sine of A is also A over C. So the inputs are complementary angles to these two different functions. But when I put B into one of them and A into the other, the outputs match. 
And so this tells me that uh, these are cofunctions because the cofunctions of these complementary angles have matching outputs or equal. Okay, let's look at cosecant and secant. Well, we have more matching outputs for complementary angle inputs. More matching outputs for complementary angle inputs. All right, tangent, cotangent, what do you think is going to happen here? Ah, outputs are matching when complementary angles are the inputs. Outputs are matching when complementary angles are the inputs. So which cofunction pairs do we have? Well, so we can see that sine and cosine, we see that uh, secant and cosecant, and we see uh, tangent and cotangent. Well, the nice way, and the nice thing about this is they're kind of telling us, right? Sine and cosine, it's the cofunction of sine. Secant and cosecant, it's the cofunction of secant. Tangent and cotangent, cotangent is the cofunction of tangent. So it's in the name, uh, I was kind of hiding there all along. All right, so let's use this to evaluate each expression. Cotan of 12 degrees minus the tan of 78 degrees. Now, we could certainly use a calculator for this, but if we were trying to use some of these properties of trig functions that we're learning, how could we do it that way? Well, cotan of 12 degrees, that is um, not something I know and not on a unit circle value in terms of where we would normally label. Same with tan of 78 degrees. Well, let's try using cofunctions. The cofunction of cotan is tan. And this, so what I'm trying to do is kind of like make those match. And I'm going to leave tan of 78 degrees the same. Well, if I change the function to its cofunction, that's only equal if I change this angle to its complementary angle, which in this case is 78 degrees. So this gives me tan of 78 minus tan of 78. Ah, that's zero. Let's try this other one. Sometimes you have to play around with these. Like, I don't know that's going to work right off the bat, but it's a tool that I have that I can try. What's cosine of 40 degrees, sine of 50 degrees? I don't know either off the top of my head, but let's try to leave sine of 50 degrees the same and do those two changes on the top. So change cosine to its cofunction, sine, and change that only works if I do my second change, right? The changes have to happen together. If I change 40 degrees to its complementary angle, which is 50 degrees, ah, now I have sine of 50 over sine of 50, which is one. 